Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects, the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. We got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Great, great. Glad to have you on. And uh, we've got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are things? There we go. Going well. Going well. I just uh, worked 48 hours at the fire station, so I'm excited to be here relaxing on the couch talking with you guys. <laughs> All right, good. Good for you. I'm sure you're tired. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm really good. Happy to be on here. And um, if you haven't checked out lots yet, just go to landgeek.com forward slash lots. Look over Tate's shoulder. And speaking of looking over someone's shoulder, last but not least, we got Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Scott, how many more websites should we talk about? No, I think we're good. Okay. All right. We can, we can start rattling them off. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I just need to give one link and then have them all point at the same place. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School and Flight School Live. Learn more. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and learn how you are going to start your own land investing business in real time, doing deals in real time with your Land Geek Sherpa, taking you up that mountain of land investing. All right, so today's topic, because we are now fully into summer, kids are swimming, camps, heat, sleeping in, all that good stuff. I thought we would talk about our summer reading list. But before we talk about our summer reading list, I think we should talk a little bit about Student Spotlight. Larry Overstreet, I spoke to Larry this morning in it just turns out that he was able to give us one of the biggest compliments that we can get on the round table. He said, after listening to the, the round table podcast about how you guys handle a seller that gets multiple offers, even after they accepted your offer, then they got a higher offer. I dealt with it in textbook style. So the seller, he offered, I want to say like 5,000 for the parcel. He got an offer for a higher offer, accepted it from Larry, and then calls him back and says, I got another offer from another company, not from our group, by the way, for 8000 Larry said, okay, I get it. If I were you, I would take that offer. No problem. That being said, it is my experience that that person is way overpaying, and they are going to discover that they're way overpaying, and during due diligence, they're going to come up with a bunch of reasons why they're overpaying and come out to where we are right now. I'm not going to play any games with you. And this is the number. So if you want to take my, de my deal first, like you said, you would not a problem, but I told no hard feelings. If you want to go with the other group, he's like, let me sleep on it. Give me 24 hours. Comes back. He's like, I'm going to go with you, Larry. Beautiful. Worked perfectly. So, um, see it, it, it actually works listening to uh, the Roundtable podcast. What do you think, Eric Peterson? I think that's pretty great. Someone is out there actually listening to us and uh, putting some of those principles into practice. That's great. It was great. You know how he ended the call with me? Let freedom ring. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mimi Leary's doing great, isn't he? He is making such great progress. I'm really proud of him. I'm really enjoying working with him. Yeah, it's great. He's, he's got 16 parcels now in inventory. Yep, and delegating and automating, uh, freeing up his time to expand his business. Yeah, because you can always make more money, but you can't get more time. And so he's actually developing a real business as opposed to another job for himself and getting out of so economic dependency. I haven't mentioned so economic dependency in a while. I thought I'd throw it out there. You should just do a, a podcast on 
the definition of so economic dependency. If you're not working, you're not making any money. So why we all do this, right? Right, Zen Master? Correct. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Yeah, no, no. That's, yeah. That's and I always like to pick on Mike because he's actually the only one in the group still with a J-O-B. I mean, look, you're saving lives. It's very, it's very noble. It's fine. <laughs> hey, no, no offense taken. I love it. Look, you, you literally can't outsource somebody else going into a burning building. No, no. Can't do that. It'd be nice, though, wouldn't it? The city has outsourced it to us. <laughs> the city has outsourced it to you. Look, so, someone's got to do it. They left it to the professionals. They leave it to the professionals. Exactly. All right. Well, since we're picking on Mike, why don't we start with Mike? What? <laughs> with your summer <laughs> reading list. What oh, are you, you reading, what? Mike? I'm going to be straight up 100% honest. I don't have a huge reading list because the books I'm reading are actually pretty involved. And so, you know, I thought about this when we said about summer reading lists and whatnot. And um, what I'm trying to do is is like really take action on the books I'm reading. And there's, there's a couple of them that, so I've gone, one that I'm doing right now, we talked about, and it's going to take me a while because it's an absolutely huge book is Maps of Meaning by Jordan Peterson. And I actually bought the actual book itself. So just so most of the time I'm doing, most of the time I'm doing Audible. And, uh, you know, I, this one I like to read along with them and look because there's diagrams in there. And it's just an incredible book about understanding uh, the mind and, and just everything. So, you know, in line with that, I did listen to his 12 Rules for Life, and I am going to go through that again because it's pretty heavy. I mean, the 12 Rules for Life is um, – it's just got some incredible uh, stuff in there. So after Maps of Meaning with Ray Dalio – I'm sorry, with uh, with Jordan Peterson, I'm going to go back to that. But I'm still I'm still hammering through. I went through uh, Ray Dalio's uh, principles and back to the beginning because that is just like – it's just like having the world's greatest like kind of motivator in your ear when you listen to him talk about – you know, the different principles that he's, you know, he's basically uh, just, it's just empowering, really. So uh, Ray Dalio principles. Another one, Genghis Khan and the making of the modern world. I'm still into that. It's it's kind of like real world. Uh, I'm not Game of Thrones because it doesn't have all that weird mystical and all that, but it's still, it takes you into a different time frame. And I remember seeing somewhere that so many, like, I don't know, billionaires had recommend this book. And I'm like, why the heck would they recommend Genghis Khan and the making of the modern world? But then start listening to this book and how he uh, then his you know his, his legacy passes on to his children and his grandchildren all these different it's just it's just incredible I mean some of the stuff's kind of horrific but it, it's really it's eye-opening and it's another very big book so it's not something that I'm just gonna cruise right through um, so really I'm gonna be straight up that these these are gonna take up the most of my time now the other thing is tools for Titans I have sitting on my desk and I always pick that and rip it open and just look at somebody uh, and just, you know, try to take action on something because there's so many cool characters in there that are real life people really achieving high level success in their, cho in their chosen industry. And a lot of it can cross over to what we do or anybody does. So I look at that and say, okay, what can I employ from this person's lifestyle to mine and uh, try to take action on it. So, you know, it's not a huge list, but it's kind of deep. It's kind of deep, Mike. You know, <laughs> you're supposed to have like a, like a breezy summer reading list. I mean, this is like <laughs> University of Chicago summer reading. I mean, it's really, really heavy, heady stuff there. Um, all of them. I mean, you're not, I mean, holy cow. Well, I, about... I enjoy that kind of, you know, I don't know. I like the way that it shifts your, shifts your brain when you listen to this stuff and cause you to think about things you normally wouldn't have and re-examine life it, itself. And then that, how's it play into the business? Well, because it gives you fresh perspective, right? And, in a higher perspective, like you said, you just said, you can always make more money, you can't get more time. Well, there's only one life, right? So taking a, a, a kind of a, a bigger look at it and seeing how your business plays into it. Because I think all of us at a certain level, it's not like we talk about taking time off from our being able to not work our business and this, but it's really, we're, we're talking about the same thing. It's just our life, right? It's And, and it's just, just because we're not the ones doing the business, we're delegating, automating, but still it's an integral part of how we make ourselves move forward and how we accomplish things. So it's, it's basically all about life. What, you know, and uh, so our model allows you also the ability to do things. And Mark, I got to say, I'm always inspired by you. And you talk about your mentor who does the soccer balls. And I tell Laura, it's like, you know, as we get better and better, 
uh, being able to just relax more and more, we also have to look for something that's a bigger, what can we, what's important to us, you know, and I know that you talk about that and I, and I, and I, I want to thank you for that. And for you always bring that up, especially at the boot camps. you bring up, uh, you have a whole section you do on this and it's really powerful when you don't have to spend all your time working, then what? Do you just like forget about the rest of the world? No. Right. There's, there's deeper meaning there. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, that, that's a, that's a mind blowing <laughs> summer reading list. That's like, that's like two or three summers of the reading list. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it's audible. That's, that's really good. I, I guess we can yeah. end the podcast, right? Like after that, that, that was some Seriously. Bang. I mean, just one of those would be great to get right, to get through the summer. That's, that's yeah, we're going to be, uh, oh, just, we're going to be in Jamaica next week, Mark. And I'm going to have Ray Dalio in my ears the whole time sitting on the beach. Cause I'm really not a big beach guy. I'm really going to be tortured underneath that tent. I like the fresh air, but I, I, this is, this is not going to be. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, you know, Ray Dalio is all about, um, radical honesty. So at some point you're going to look at Laura and like, I'm not having fun. <laughs> yeah. Mark, I mean, let's let's think about the let's think about the problem that that Mike's going to be facing next week. He's going to be roughing it on a beach in Jamaica, not having any fun. Wow! <laughs> says the guy who just got back from Hawaii. Yeah, but I'm, says the guy I'm who just got back from Paradise. <laughs> I'm not complaining that I didn't have but fun. He had fun. He, he did have fun. I had he made blast, man. plenty of pictures. Oh yeah. I enjoyed like just inundating Tate and Mark with the pictures. Ah, oh, let's see if I can make Tate jealous on this one. <laughs> I just finally stopped responding because I was like, I thought we were friends, but apparently we're not. Can we take yeah. I mean, you know, comparison is the thief of happiness. And let's just say I was one of the most unhappy human beings on the planet while Scott. <laughs> I felt was the same way. Why? Like, I was happy that Scott was there because it was like, oh, he deserves it. And then he started sending pictures and I was like, this guy's a jerk. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, look at me surfing. It's like this beautiful picture of him, you know, it, on yeah. up on the it's surfboard, riding the wave. You yes. know, oh, here's where they filmed Jurassic Park. Yeah, I'm exactly. It right now. I'm on yeah. the beach. Here's where they right filmed. Now, here's what I'm eating. Yeah, you oh know. So, gosh. Like, Don't mind me. I'm just on a boat out there, uh, you know, doing an island <laughs> where it's like, yeah, we're, we're not really friends anymore, Scott. Yeah, how's your office right now? <laughs> yeah. What I can't know. Scott Todd do? What can't he do? I mean, surfing, flying airplane. I mean, the world's most interesting man now. He's like, he's no, I don't know about there that. we go. A new nickname. <laughs> yeah. Damien Lupo. Look out, man. I haven't faced tigers and lions yet, so. <laughs> yet. Yet. All right, Mimi Schmidt, what do you got on your summer reading list? Well, I, guess, I guess after what Mike said, you're like war and peace. No, exactly. No, I'm going a little lighter, actually. So I think Boys in the Boat is a great book for the summertime, right? It's very water oriented. Um, both of my kids do crew. And the beginning of that uh, Jack Ryan series, the very first episode, the very first uh, the Jack Ryan, John Krasinski is actually on the water doing crew right outside the boathouse there in uh, D.C. But anyway, back to the uh, Boys in the Boat is a great story about motivation. And every time I get frustrated, you know, you get frustrated with your business and think about how hard you're working. There's nothing like what some of what the main character in Boys in the Boat went through to um, to achieve the success that he achieved. And it's very interesting. Uh, you learn a lot more about how things were back in the Depression. Um, so I thought I found that very interesting historically. Right? They tie the the motivation of the team. Also in in with the depression and World War One, it is World War One. Um, and then another book I recommend is Virtual Freedom because all of us want to be sitting out on the beach in the summertime. Uh, Virtual Freedom by Chris, yes, by Chris Becker will help you find VA so you can spend more time with your family out and doing the summer. It's a little dry, I warn you. I would audible it and listen to it at one and a half times the speed, but yes. Great, great Seven. tips. All right. The technician, Eric Peterson, what do you got? All right. So I always enjoy Mike Michalowicz and his books. Um, latest one, Clockwork. I'm reading that one now or listening to it. Um, and, and that one's really great. All about, you know, getting your business to run like clockwork. So it's about systems and automation and, and all those 
types of things, um, but it's great so far. Um, Atomic Habits, which I know, Mark, you've recommended. Um, it's Love a great it. book about, you know, forming habits in your, in your life and in your, your business life. Um, and last one would be uh, Willpower Doesn't Work. Um, and that's, it's kind of another one similar to Atomic Habit in the sense that it's about, you know, kind of building um, kind of purpose into your life and like having sacred environments, doing things with intention, you know, forming good habits, that kind of stuff. Um, but those are, those are the three that, that I'm looking at over the summer. Yeah. You know, what I love about willpower doesn't work is that he really, really, um, I think beautifully illustrates how important it is to surround yourself in the right environment, right? So if you're trying to lose weight, but you're hanging out with people that, you know, like me that love beer and donuts in the morning for breakfast, you're probably, no matter how great your willpower is by nighttime, you're, you're, it's going to be, you know, expended and you're going to fall off the wagon and, and, you know, eat that, that cupcake that you said you swore you wouldn't eat because you just don't have, it's like a, it's like a muscle. So you've, you know, and in business surrounding yourself in the right environment is so critical. And Jim Rohn always says you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. And so it's so, so important. It's, I really, that was like my big takeaway was with willpower doesn't work is how important is setting up that right environment um, to make your habits easier to, to execute on for sure. All right. The big papa, Tate Litchfield. What are Alrighty, you ready? So uh, are you just, changing, one, are you, are you just changing diapers or what's going on? What's the Daisy update? Are you even have time to read? I do read. Yeah. I set aside uh, at least an hour a day to read. So it's kind of like my time, sit down, try to, I don't know, learn something or just sometimes it's just, for fun and distract myself. But uh, a book I'm reading is one you'll be familiar with. Well, I just finished it. It's called Never Split the Difference um, by Chris Voss. So this book, it, it's funny because it's been in my face for, I don't know, five years or so. And I always see it at the boot camps and Mark's always talking about how amazing this book is. And finally I decided, all right, I'm going to give it a shot. And I was within the first chapter, I was like hooked, couldn't put it down. And I love it. It's um uh, the author of the book is a former uh, FBI negotiator. And so he relates different cases or field studies from real life experiences to modern day negotiation tactics. So it's a fantastic read. It's a, it's a page turner. I really, really enjoyed it because it wasn't, you know, a typical bo business book, I would, I would say. The other one that I really enjoyed um, is uh, Delivering Happiness, A Path to Profits, Passion and Purpose. And this one is by uh, Tony Heisey. I think that's how you say it. Shea? Is it Shea? Is that how he pronounces it? I don't know. It's I-E-H. Yeah. He's that, the Zappos guy. It's the Zappos guy. Yeah. And it's basically, you know, he takes Zappos and it's making one point something million dollars a year. And then within five or six years, he turns it into a billion dollar company. And it kind of talks about how he did it. And the main thing that he, he focuses on is customer service. So I really liked this book and I think there's a lot of principles that we can apply um, to our own individual businesses from it. And it's just, it's just really interesting to see how he grew this, this company to what it is today. And then last one is actually something that uh, just got added to my list. I haven't read it yet, but uh, a good friend of mine, Jeff Detmer sent it to me today. It's called, it's called Calm the F Down, How to Control What You Can and Accept What You Can't So You Can Stop Freaking Out and Get On With Your Life. So I've never read it. Um, he just got it and he's like, it's great. You got to check it out. This one's by Sarah Knight. Not sure if you read it, Mark. I've heard of it. Um, if I'll, Tell me how it is. Yeah. Um, but I, I, mean, I could I, definitely calm the F down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we all could. So uh, 
I don't know why he sent it to me now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, you probably were like, Jeff, you're not getting enough ads out. And he's like, calm the F down. Yeah, he's like, I'm doing fine, Tate. No, actually, uh, he got it and he's like, you should check it out. It's really good. So uh, I'll, I'll read it and see what I think. But uh, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, my, my favorite F word book is Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this, yes. That yeah. is a great one. That's a great one. But I'll be interested to see what you think of that one. All right. Those are, those are great uh, books. All right. Land Geek Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd. All right. So uh, like Mike, I'm going to study the summer, right? Like I'm going to, I'm not just going to consume. I'm going to like study people, but, but uh, the first one, and I have three, but the first one is not necessarily the study from it's more of like a relaxation book and I saw the documentary on the flight home and it's based on the uh, the book Bad Blood uh, about about uh, Elizabeth Holmes I read that book and it's the, phenomenal the, the documentary on uh, HBO was fantastic and I'm like how in the heck did this crazy lady like perpetrate this fraud. So I want to know like more. It's crazy. So that, that is on the list. Bad blood. It's incredible. That's John <laughs> Kerry, you, I believe the New York times. Yep, that's right. Yep. Uh, uh, Wall Street journal, right? What is the Washington post? Yeah. Um, uh, he, he, he basically, journal, wasn't he? Wall Street journal, Wall Street journal. Yeah. He, he basically broke it and sunk the company. I mean, multi-billion yeah. dollar valuation to zero. Yeah. Nine, nine billion to zero. Like, wow, that was fast, harsh. So that, that's on the list and I uh, look forward to reading that one. My next two are my study books. And honestly, one of them, you don't even need to get the book. You can just go, I'll give you a website you can go to if you want to follow along. I mean, you go to Wikipedia for this one. But this one, I know Mike Zeno is going to like cross one of them off his list and revert back to this one, unless he's already read it. But like, I did that last summer, Scott. And it is, um, it is called the, um, the 36 Strategies. And so you can, you can Google it, you know, 36 strategies. It's uh, basically Chinese proverbs. Um, you know, it's, it's similar to the art of war, but it's not because the art of war is about military. This is really about different strategies. And what's cool about it is if you go to like, you can go to Wikipedia, there's a whole Wikipedia write up on it, but another guy has created a free website called the 36 strategies.com. And in there, he basically talks about, you know, like, what are the 36 strategies? They're, they're grouped into six, basically, buckets. Superiority, confrontation, attack, confusion, gaining ground, and despair. And what you can do to your, um, to, you know, to, to your competitor, if you will, and how you can kind of, like, work to chisel them away. This so, is why I'm always nice to Zeno, by the way, because I know yeah, he knows all this stuff. He knows this stuff, right? Like, yeah. you know, like... The one that really caught my attention was, um, let's see, it was this one that says, um, kill with a borrowed knife. Like, wow, that's pretty powerful. So, you know, oh. we'll, learn, we'll learn about that piece. So that's kind of like the summer. I, I want to digest these things. And then the other one that I want to digest is, is uh, not really anything to do with business. And I think that's where some of the best business ideas come from. But it's, it's actually a writing book, and it's called uh, The 45 Master Characters. And the thing about The 45 Master Characters is that basically we all, as humans, we all fall within these, these 45 kind of uh, archetype types. We all do, right? Like, you know, we, we all have like, oh, there's the king or there's the dictator or whatever. We all fall within these, these archetypes. So I think that if you can kind of understand where someone falls in, you know, and you can pinpoint them like, oh, this guy's playing the role of the king or this guy's playing the role of, of this in their lives. Well, now you know what motivates them because there are really just 45 different types of people. Is a terrorist hunter in there? I'm sure she is. Like, like, what, uh, like what motivates yeah. Mimi? I don't know. So, you know, I'll have to report back at the end of the summer what I've uh, discovered, but you know, where, where Mimi and, or where all you guys fit. But essentially, I, I think that that's, that's kind of what I'm doing this summer is, you know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, which of you are the jokers, 
which of you are the jesters, the kings, the psychics, you know, how, how everybody falls into each of these individual groups. All That's right. It. Well, I'm definitely gonna have to read that because I don't, you know, I don't want to be pigeonholed <laughs> when I, when I see you. Yeah. You don't, you don't want me sizing you up and knowing like exactly. where you fall, but nobody else. Like you don't know where I fall. Right. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. All great center reading books. Um, okay. So I've got three and um, I'm going to give you the, the one that um, I'm going to give you two that I think will really, really move the needle in your life. Right. Um, the first one is why we sleep by Matthew Walker. And I have to tell you, uh, after reading that, like, it, first of all, this is not a woo-woo book at all. This is a lot of science. And this is like hundreds of thousands of hours of sleep studies. But we spend a third of our lives sleeping. And what I discovered is that uh, I might be doing it a little bit wrong. And the consequences of not sleeping well is essentially shortening your life. And um, it's a really, really great book. But if you don't have time or you're not interested in why we sleep, my cliff notes on this are go to bed in a cool environment, turn off all electronics about 30 minutes before you go to bed, make sure the lights are out. So there's not a lot of light going on. If you can't avoid it, put on like a blue blocker sunglass so that you're not stimulated at night. You want to sleep in a cooler environment than you probably think you should. 65 to 68, which in Phoenix means that my electric bills are through the roof, but the stakes are pretty high to not sleep at a cooler temperature. And then the third one is go to sleep and wake up seven days a week consistently around the same time and get seven to nine hours consistently. The stakes uh, mentally, physically, emotionally could not be higher. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a fascinating read and um, I love it. The, the second one is The Second Mountain by David Brooks. Uh, the first mountain is are typically, you know, when you're younger um, and you're going through your, your first mountain climb right? Which is essentially sort of ego-based, right? I want to get good grades. If I get good grades, I'm going to go to a good college. I'm going to go to a good college. I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to have prestige. People are going to uh, think a lot of me, whatever this, this, and this. You're going to kind of climb the, the hierarchy of, you know, your, your social life, if you will, right? To the top. You're going to, you know, be on that first mountain of getting all those ego-based needs. I got a nice house. I got a nice car. Um, I've got nice clothes, all those things. And all of a sudden you wake up one day and you realize there's a lot more to life. Like you got all those things and the first mountain really didn't sort of fulfill you um, in, any, in any way uh, deeply. Then you go on to the second mountain and the second mountain is about purpose. And essentially, it's not about you. It's about serving others. And in serving others, you start to start to really deepen your life in lots of different ways, in your relationships. And um, it's a really interesting read. Uh, he goes through a lot of different uh, things on that second mountain um, that, you know, you can aspire to, essentially. Uh, it's a really, really great read. And then, so those two are like a little, not, not Zeno heady, but a little heady, right? But the third one is the best audiobook I've ever listened to. If you've never been on Audible, you get one free book. I always recommend this to people as their one free audiobook because talk about getting bang for your buck. I want to say it's like 72 hours. It is the longest 
book, but it's like listening to theater. It is so well done. I would not read this book. I would only listen to it because the audiobook is that well done. Um, it is Shantaram. It is Shantaram. If you took Slumdog Millionaire and combined it with Goodfellas, you would have Shantaram. It is a phenomenal uh, fiction and combined with a little bit of nonfiction uh, read. So those are my three for the summer reading lists. All right. Well, I thought everyone's uh, summer reading list was really fantastic, but we are now at that point in the podcast where we get to put Mimi on the spot and ask her for her tip of the week. Mimi, what do you got? So I see more and more people are having problems staying out of trouble on Facebook marketplace. So I have a suggestion to get back in. All right. So you have to do it from your phone, okay? Turn off the data on your phone, okay? But you can still get to the internet when your data is turned off. So go open Facebook on the app and click Marketplace. It's going to give you a message that tells you that something went wrong and there'll be a button that says try again, okay? Don't press it. Click back and turn your data on. Go back to Facebook and click the try again button, okay? From that point, you should be able to get back into Marketplace. The first thing I would do is go find any ads that are in your support inbox that they've flagged. Okay, get those, just get, get rid of them. Um, on your laptop, I'd also clean out your cache, everything but your passwords, um, before you try to go back in that way. Um, but you should be able to get in. I'd love some feedback on, uh, from folks that have tried this. So, so far, I've gotten some mixed reviews, but good luck. Wow. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. Hopefully you're getting a lot of value out of these round table podcasts. Uh, Mike, what do you got? Mark, what about napping? Napping. If you're going to nap, right, then you need to nap. You were biphasic, which means that basically around, for most people around two, three o'clock, you feel tired. And that's very natural. And so if you take a nap, don't take anything longer than an hour nap. Do not nap after four in the, in the sense that it's actually harmful in the sense that actually sleeping longer than nine hours is actually harmful as well. Um, there are some studies that say that those people that do nap, um, there is benefit to it. You will not catch up on sleep. Once you have a sleep deficit, you have a sleep deficit. There's no way to catch up on it. That's actually a myth. But napping actually can help. Um, if you do it, but don't do it after four. And then certainly if you're having trouble going to sleep, you don't want to nap. You also don't want to have that afternoon coffee either. If you're having trouble going to sleep and I hate to say it, Mike, for nightcap, you don't want to have alcohol as well. I only drink whiskey. <laughs> Not great for your sleep. <laughs> Um, certainly don't do it as a nightcap, <laughs> which is kind of destroys the whole idea of nightcap, but um, it's really bad for your sleep. Thank All you. right. Um, but I want to just ask the listeners, please do us a little favor. If you're getting value, uh, send the podcast to a friend through the interweb, share it with your friends, share it on social media, and please do us three little fav favors. You got to subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screen, screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 passive income launch kit. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone. Are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. Yeah, I, I think. I got a great question, Mike. We should use at the. Uh, I know sometimes we see if listeners listen to our, um, our round table here and we give them prizes. I think it should be what should you never share with Scott Todd at a dinner table? And the answer would be a knife. A kn <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow your knife? Yeah, that's that I'm is about a good to go question. down. That is. <laughs> now, the hard part will be us remembering that we asked that question. Well, not, yeah. not if we write it down. We got to write it down. Pen and paper, man. Look, look, I got, I mean, not, not to brag, but I do have a Hawaiian pen that I can write with. 
like I'll write that down. But you notice he wore a white shirt today just to show off his tan. No, no. <laughs> Everybody, all the viewers need to get online and watch this one because Scott has got the most amazing tan I've yeah. ever seen on a yeah. white. Yeah. I mean, this is. Listen, I I don't to tell you, like, you know. But then amazing. again, it, it could oh, just be your fancy lights in your room. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it could be. It's real. It's real tan. I mean, I know I'll, we've I'll, talked I'll, about I'll, you I'll, turning that turning that room into like a, a production office. Maybe you have a oh, made yeah. room there now. Yeah, you don't you don't know, man. Like I, I got I got the high end high end surface technology that's that's really doing a lot of good stuff around here. It's just spray tan down. booth. The spray tan booth. Such a disappointment for my son, man. I no. gotta go to the mall, I gotta get his repaired. Two what do you do to it? What do you do to it? Used it. Uh, he must have misused it. <laughs> what's that does it have problems with like the internet and stuff it, yeah it's like uh the screen's like um not coming on yeah. i will tell you that um in apple's defense because i believe in being fair apple is coming out with the pad os have you seen that i haven't had time because i've got a little uh eye fatigue so they, they are coming out with their own uh, iPad operating system because the iPad has always been based on the same operating system as our phones. So they're dedicating its own operating system, which does give me some hope that they're listening to this podcast and listening to my complaints and that they're going to like take action on it. But like they've, they've, I don't know, it's going to be hard for me to switch right now. I feel like once you got the surface, like that was it. Um, I think Tim Cook was like, guys, we got to really radically change this business model. Yeah, you know, like I, I feel like I'm making technology great again. <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh, <that's bad. laughs> I need to come up with a, a, a meat like, hat. By like, the way, Larry need, Overstreet just threw up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I need to come up with a hat that says like making technology great again, and you know, that, like I don't know, I got. I, I always tell my kids, like, if I ever ran for, um, like, you ever see people that are running for, like, county commissioner or whatever, they, 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 they got to be the worst marketers ever. These people running for, like, polit you know, politics because. Are you picking they, Detmer? What's that? Detmer's running. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe Jeff's got the marketing down. I didn't know he was running for anything. He but he does have the marketing down. Are you kidding? Listen, so, yeah, you know, Jeff, if you're listening to me, listen, pick one topic, man. Like, for me. I always tell my kids like the roads around here are terrible. I would just put up signs and say like, "Hate, hate the, hate the commute, Todd for Todd for traffic or whatever." Right? You know, like just pound them in. Yeah, like just this one topic, man. So it's gonna ring. Yeah, Todd for traffic, right? You know, traffic sucks. Hashtag traffic sucks. Roads, fix the roads. I would be out there doing Facebook lives every day. Like, look at the road here. This is ridiculous. Not on my watch. And then once I got elected, I'd be like, nowhere to be found. I don't know. Just collect the money. Yes. <laughs> Just be in Hawaii. Working on I'm in Hawaii. Like, dialing in. Here to serve right. the Florida man. By, by the way, so, so next week, are we going to talk about our, our summer, um, you know, like Netflix, Hulu show list? How are we going to do that when we got to read all these books? <laughs> well, you got you to make a little time. I mean... For, uh, yeah, we talk about our our summer. Our you've, got, you've, got to, you've got to dedicate a solid two hour block every single day to streaming content. It's important. Yeah, you gotta okay. do this. Gotcha, gotcha. This is important. Yeah. It's like reading a book, but you got to dedicate time to Netflix. Otherwise, you're gonna miss out. And then once you miss out on these new shows, you're never gonna get caught up again. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm sure they'll never be around again. I yeah. want season four, season four of Game of Thrones. Oh my gosh! Of what show? To Game of Thrones. Is it what? is it worth the commitment, Mike? Uh, yeah. It this I figured out that that show can actually cause depression. <laughs> after the big, I don't want to say anything, but after this big wedding thing, depression, depression. How did you get past the third one, man? Like, the, like I stopped on the third one. I'm like, this is the worst show ever. No. It, it, <laughs> It's, it's, it, man, it messes with your emotions. I'm telling you. I don't know. Commitment issues. That one's too long. 
Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I like Tate's model. Like one season, five episodes, we're done. In and out. Yeah. yeah like, the I, next- like, I like the BBC shows. Like Luther has like three episodes. We're in, then we're into season two. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, well thanks, everybody. And uh, see everybody next week. <laughs>